Hi, I'm Ken Mingus. Welcome back to Mingus on Tech, where we talk about what's hot and what's not in IT. What's hot is the new MacBook from Apple. What's not are trade shows. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you're pointing at I'm here guys. with Mike and Keith. <laughs> Keith is not. Mike is hot with the MacBook. He'll love that. I'm, um, I'm not seriously, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the MacBook, which has just been upgraded uh, uh, by Apple about a month ago, and get a feel for how it, you know, whether it's any faster, whether you can tell any difference from last year's model. And then we're going to talk with Keith about trade shows. Keith is just back from Interop and thinks that trade show shows may have hit peak trade show. Yeah, I think that the trade show market is evolving. Flat. It's, it's, it's evolving a, into something else. Okay. All right. So we're we'll, going to come back we'll to, that. to that. Hold that thought. Let the tension build <laughs> <laughs> while we talk about the MacBook. So uh, so first, I just want to say, I, I think the design of the MacBook, the, the form factor is stunning. I have loved this thing since it came out a year ago. I'm a little bummed that they still only have the one uh, USB Type-C port. We'll get into that in a minute. But in terms of design, I think this is like the best design that Apple has right now, other than rose gold. I will take a bold stand against rose gold on laptops and iMacs, okay? <laughs> let's let's just get that out of the way. So, uh, Mike, you've had this for what, like a week, week or two now to, to sort of put it through its paces, and um, faster chip, faster memory. How's it feel? How's it work? Is it is it Im noticeably improved, I guess, is the question I would have. It's definitely an improvement, but it still retains everything that makes the MacBook so great to begin with. The fact that it's so portable, yeah. the fact that it's uh, it's just a machine that you can take with you. I mean, if you're an, if you're a I, Road I kinda, warrior, right? Yeah, uh, exactly. If you travel a lot. See, I, I kind of slid to the iPad because I've been traveling a lot lately. So I, I bought um, a case with the, uh, the keyboard. keyboard. Yeah. But this just makes me question <laughs> my need for an iPad. I mean, because this gives you full OS 10. This gives you all the, you know, the latest tech, you know, from Intel. And it's it actually works really well, especially, I mean, the keyboard is a full-size keyboard. Right. Um, the keys have actually been, you know, designed to be wider uh, than normal so that... So you don't have any problems typing on this compared oh, to like Oh, absolutely a, not. As a okay. matter of fact, I want this keyboard design to come over to the 15-inch well, that's MacBook what I'm waiting Pro. for. I mean, you know, to get a little bit off topic here, one of the things that I'm really hoping for out of WWDC next month is that they're going, Apple's finally going to release an updated MacBook Pro that's probably a larger, a little thicker version, but with this design. Oh, I would love you that. You know, I would buy that. At, uh, Tim Cook, if you're listening, we're ready to buy. Okay, if you'll just release the MacBook Pro in this form factor, we're ready. I, I have a question since I don't follow okay. Apple yeah, and please, Mac yes. as much as you, right. you know, fanatics. I don't know. Wow. All right. Um, it's true. Did this used to be called the MacBook Air, or is there still a MacBook no, Air? No, there is a MacBook and Air. And that's but confusing But as the hell. thing is, yeah. this makes the MacBook Air look gigantic. It makes it obsolete, too, I think. Yeah, I wonder if... if, um, if if Jobs were still here, because he has he had a predile uh, predilection to cutting off right. uh, products at their apex. Why would you get a Mac them? with art with this right. on the market now? Why would you get a MacBook Air? I know it's a little cheaper because these start at twelve ninety nine, right? Right, twelve ninety nine. This is the fourteen ninety nine model. Yep. The one this actually this is the fifteen ninety nine model. Okay, so this has the upgraded chip. Mm -hmm. okay. This has the yep. This has the, the higher specs. I mean, eight gigs uh, of memory across the board, which is the most you can get, which right. is a little bit of a concern and for did me. Did they shrink the size too? Or the, the, the the MacBook Air comes in eleven inch. Yeah. Like like, like letterbox almost, and 13, right? 13-inch uh, yep, screen? 13-inch, uh, well, it depends on, on the model there, too. Right. I think there's an 11-inch version. And right, the 11 and the version. 13. This is 12, so this is sort of right in the middle. Right in the yeah, middle. right. Exactly. I agree with you. I don't I don't see a reason for a MacBook Air now, and I'm really wondering if Apple's going to start to condense its, um, uh, that, its that, laptop that lineup. Looks they, and, it looks and feels like it's a light. That's the ultra portable now. It's what, two pounds? Right. Oh, yeah, two pounds. Two yeah. pounds, and it doesn't feel like two pounds. I what mean, about this thing is just so easy to, to, to take with you and to, to carry around. I mean, it's just does it get does it get too hot? No, absolutely not. I mean, no, no there's fans. No, there's no, no, fans. There's no yeah. fans. It uses the uh, Skylake um, Core M chips. That's right. The, this is the the one point. And battery life is three. Good. Battery life. Apple says up to ten hours. I haven't. Um, I haven't. Pff, I haven't run out of juice since. You know, yep. uh, in between charges. Okay. You know, it's it's actually stayed up and and it's. It's. I mean, the speed is nice. It. it you know. It. It's. It says with uh, one point. Uh, was it a 1.1 gigahertz on the the low end? 1.2 gigahertz on the the high end. The core M5, but it, it turbo boosts up to 2.7 gigahertz on the high end. 2.2 gigahertz on the low end. But what that does is allows it to stay 
running, you know, relatively. Unless you really ha tax it. Unless you really need it, yeah, exactly. Okay. Have you run into any slowdowns? I mean, have you done any video encoding or anything like that on I'm this one I'm going yet? to test that. I okay. haven't got around to it because I've been working on a, a review for the, the new Phantom 4. Um, yeah. But that's pretty much been completed as of yesterday, and now the focus is going to be on this. But I have been using this to write that review or the the, uh, the text. And portion. you haven't seen any slowdowns in terms of day to day use. No, this thing's, beach balls this thing's great. Like I mean, that. you do that, and now it's asleep. Yeah. You know, you open the lid. And boom, it's back up. And boom, it's right Which back up. Which is OS 10 for you. Exactly. Now, does do you carry that around in a like a backpack, or do you? You'd He's got a big back pocket. You have a big uh, yeah, I have a very big. <laughs> it's because my, you know, my, I, my you own. See him just walking down the street. It's only hand. one pocket, but it's a big back pocket. Yeah. Well, do, do, do you get to that that phantom feeling? You know how like you get that, that it's thing, almost not there. It's almost it's not so there, light. or that you you tend to forget it, or because that that's my big fear sometimes is that if I'm. You know, there's a certain feel when you're wearing a backpack yeah. about whether... Yeah, you want a little bit of heft there. I get Whether that, that computer is actually well, in there or not. Well, to, to, you know, to get to the point, if you're going to have a MacBook and you're carrying it around, and it, again, USB Type-C, one port, and you've got a hard drive or some other things you want to plug in, you're going to have to have some kind of port replicator, Yeah, there's right? a dongle that you can buy. Uh, uh, dongles. That's a breakup dongle. Welcome to dongle. 1992. You know, dongles. Yeah, That's the one thing I have about it because in the last Mingus on Tech episode, Scott Finney, the editor in chief of Computer World, we were talking about this briefly, and he actually really came down very hard on Apple for incorporating the old USB Type C Gen 1 port um, because it really limits the expandability of this down the road. If you buy one of these things and think you're going to keep it for five years, you've got one port, and it's sort of like two year old technology. Um, do you see that as an issue? I haven't run into any issues okay. uh, yet with the expandability. And again, so you're the, saying the Scott's wrong? The options there. I'm not saying Scott's wrong specifically, oh, you but that he would this like machine. That. You should tell him this he's machine wrong. Scott, should you're wrong. be. Um, this machine might not just be for him. Right. You know, if you need expandability, if you need ports, Apple sells other computers. Right. You know, I mean, but Good this point. is very much limited to um, uh, Road Warriors. I mean, that's the design. That's the focus. I mean, yeah. it's not limited to them, but I mean, that's the focus. Do you think that if, if you were carrying this around in a coffee shop or at the airport, do you think people would notice that and go, ooh, what is that? Or do you think that... You mean because of the design? Because or? of the design, whether whether do you think people know that it's a new one? Do you Does it matter? It's going to well, look I just like were, the one from last year. Yeah, I know, Externally but, but with hasn't Apple, changed. Apple thinks sometimes people would be like, "Ooh, is that the new one?" Like, yeah. you know, when the phone first came out. Well, they, I'm the sure, one. I'm sure last year when this first came out, yeah. people would see that and say, "Oh, is that the new one?" <laughs> does it matter? I don't think. As long see, as I don't know if it matters. It does. It does to me. Seriously, I think it does matter to a lot of people. It does to me. I really like the looks of this thing. I love the looks of it too. But for my part, if if, if something it does what fits, you need it to do, exactly. you're good. Exactly. Like, do you, do you guys go around making fun of people if they're not using an Apple no. MacBook? No. I, no. Do, I do all the time. With like, I the, try if, not if to. I'm Delaware tempted to. Kind of. I do bite my tongue, but I don't know anybody who doesn't use an Apple. Just, I don't know who you're hanging well, see, out you're with. You're not but, traveling uh, as much other as Other than I Sharon Magos at Computer, at computer <laughs> World. She does not. Well, she's got so, actually several Apple products. All right, so upgraded. It's uh, fa a little faster. Meets all the needs. Battery life is good. You're not too worried about the port. So... If you're in the market for an ultra light laptop, you'd probably say avoid the MacBook Air and find the MacBook you like. Unless the MacBook Air is Except more along, uh, you know, unless the unless MacBook Air is more gold. along the lines of what you're looking for. But yeah. this is a great portable computer that doesn't really compromise in terms of performance. Uh, it's super responsive. I mean, uh, I use it every day for you know browsing the web yep. and email. And if that's what you're using it for, I mean, I'm going to try my my hand on video editing yep. and. Things seem to be, you know, okay thus far. And okay. uh, But I'll have more details in the actual final review. Great. Okay. Let me switch gears real quick because I do want to talk a little bit about trade shows and interop and CES because it's something that uh, uh, you can also weigh in. Um, well, you've been, you've been to some of the Apple events, right? Oh, I have. Uh, well, it's, it's been a long time. I know. But you I, I did you go, go to WWDC? Macworld. Okay. And WWDC. Okay. Same yeah. sort of thing, though, because one of the things that Keith and I were talking about the other day is that he's just back from interop. And the, the question is, have these things gotten so big and so unwieldy that it's difficult for anybody to, you know, show their showcase their wares at, at one of these events? Yeah, I would say on the consumer side, they're still big. So cons like you know, CES. CES and Mobile World Congress yeah. and uh, next month uh, E3 for the video game conference. Yep. Those are still very, very large uh, conferences. Where we're seeing kind of uh, things that are shrinking, it's in the general kind of enterprise tech space. 
Um, so things like Interop. Now, 15 years ago, Interop was huge. It took right. up the entire Las Vegas Convention Center. You know, it had just everybody was there if you were in networking. Now, part of it is that networking doesn't have the excitement that it did in, in 2000. Because, right. again, not a lot of things were networked. And so everybody went to that show. Now everybody knows how to do Wi-Fi stuff and everyone knows how to connect everything to everything. Um, so networking is kind of lost. It's it's has flow, the show I, shrunk. Is it smaller the than show much was, smaller? The show was probably the smallest I've seen it is in in the last fifteen years that I've gone. Okay. It does keep getting smaller and smaller. I think Tim Green from Network World uh, counted there were three hundred fifty vendors last year. This year there were only two hundred fifty that he counted. That's up. a big so, drop. Yeah, and they've also announced that they're moving to another a smaller smaller venue, venue. next year, which is usually a sign that things aren't going the way mm -hmm. that you want them to. Um, but I think we've also noticed over the past five five years. Vendor yeah. specific shows are getting bigger. Things like Cisco Live, EMC. for example, EMC World, Salesforce yeah. has its as a as an annual show yeah. now. The vendors have taken over that that the hey we're going to run our own show and then we'll invite third party vendors to kind of um, showcase their stuff, working with our stuff, right. and then they also can kind of keep away the competitors. So well, it's interesting it, because you know obviously Mac World used to be the big Apple show, and right. that, that died. You know, I don't know, seven, eight, ten years ago. Apple does its own events now, but it doesn't bring in really anybody else to sort of piggyback. It's all Apple right. all the time. I, I don't know why they would have such a disdain of doing that. You know, unless, you know, why not bring in third-party hardware makers that work exclusively with Mac or better with Mac? I think a lot of these vendors like Seagate, for example, that makes um, external hard drives that work, you know, really well with Mac or yeah. PC or, or, you know, some of those. Well, Apple started shifting away once the stores started kicking in. So Once they figure they've got it, they so can showcase anything they need to showcase right, in all the stores. So their stores they're become taking the show. In they're fact. taking the, the yeah the show to all of their stores yeah. and to the public by yeah. Because in, initially, when the stores first opened up, they would compare the, um, the store traffic with actual MacWorld numbers. So they were saying, "Hey, we were reaching this amount of MacWorld." A lot more people. Right. Yeah. yeah. But I, I just MacWorld feel bad as a, as a gadget reviewer for for Network World where we get a lot of third party kind of accessories and things like that, but there's no good place for them to kind of announce these new products unless right. they try to either piggyback off of an Apple event. Right. I see that a lot with cases and, and keyboards. As and soon as like something that. comes out, yeah. you've got that, yeah. Uh, or they have to hold their own, but they might not be big enough to hold their own kind of event. They're kind of stuck in this limbo of, of where to go. Because if they go to CES, then you're, you're drowning in a sea. You're lost. Of, of I mean, we can't even, you know, trying to cover that. We yeah. have trouble figuring out exactly who's doing what. And in fact, it seems like a lot of manufacturers have gotten away from announcing things at something as big as CES right. because it just gets lost in the noise. And then the other, right. the other ones that we're seeing are like Google I.O. and the WWDC for, for Apple yeah. and Microsoft Build. You know, those are the developer conferences. Right. Um, and I, I suppose there's some aspect of, of an expo for them, um, but only in the development area. So I still think that there could be a really cool show that's general enough. But the problem but is, I don't think it's going to happen. Anymore, once so. once the show gets cool enough, it starts getting too big, and all of a sudden now we're we're back to the same problem. That's true. Yeah. Sometimes when you when, you know when you get too big, then everyone starts. These shows all, they they big. do seem to go through cycles. Yeah. You know, they start off. There's a big bang. Several years of popular, popular, popular. Then too big, and then they start to fall off. You know. Okay. So basically, the lesson here is that things are in transition when it comes to these big events and these conference. Well, these big shows. Yeah. All right. Basically, well, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've nailed that down. Well, I didn't know if I had a closing thought. We did it, you boys. know, like a Jerry well, Springer type thing. Well, you know, no, you don't have to have a closing thought. Okay. All right? Just something to be aware of. Yeah, if I, you're I just, planning down the road for to go to some of these shows, they may not be there in a few years. Right. You exactly. better figure out how to get your information somewhere else. Yep. That's oh. a lesson learned. That works for me. Good. All right. Um, quick shout out to Linda. You still need to get an iPhone. Yeah, Eat. what's our Linda moment this she week? She hasn't gotten an iPhone yet. She still has not gotten She's still got the 3G. <laughs> Every Linda. time Poor I Linda. talk to her. I but understand. If you think Linda would like one she of these notebooks? No, she wouldn't want one of those. <laughs> she would she would like one, but she it would be tough setting it up. And a quick shout out to Gene Dimitri, who used to be at Computer World, who apparently watches Gene. every one of our episodes. Oh, Gene. Hey, Gene. So Gene, thank you, and thank you to everybody else who's tuned in. I think that'll do it for now. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Keith. Thank you. That's Thanks, a wrap. Man.